Uh, this is the Soma Som Prakash. Um, so today we are going to discuss about the famous topic now is going on about IR35 and its impact and what is it all about and um, you know what's the solution, what's the going forward uh, for IR35. So those of you who do not know, um, I am a wealth coach, I am a property investor, I invest in uh, the multiple businesses. So today we are going to discuss about IR35 because that relates to a contracting world uh, because I um, I was contracting as an IT consultant and worked for quite a lot of years and it has impacted a lot of people, um, not only in IT but in other sectors as well. Let's talk about it, okay? So what we'll be discussing is what is it so the agenda for today is uh, why what when and who so that means let's go through that and i will talk about how do we know that whether you are in ir35 or not and what is the way forward so that means how do you plan your actions going forward uh, in this world of ir35 so what is our ir35 as, as you know is ir means in and revenue uh, 35 so that means when this uh, rule came in in 2017 i think it was gordon brown uh period and um so this is uh you know in the revenue 35 and now it is called hmrc uh, you know her majesty revenue and customs so so the rule number 35 and what is it all about so it's about um you know a tax obligation because uh you know hmrc or in the revenue started to think that uh, you know um, there are a lot of disguised employees so that means uh, people working as a contractor or freelancer uh, through their own PSC public um, I think private um, PSC right? your own private limited company um, so if you are uh, trading through that that means you are um, saving a lot of tax that means you don't have to pay tax uh, income tax and, uh, and national insurance um you know um so they say that okay though that's not right so that means there are quite a lot of uh, consultants and contractors who are working as an employee uh, just like any other employee they uh, work monday to friday then they, you know saturday sunday they are off and then come back on monday they're exactly the same desks as you know um, and uh, do they do a specific kind of a uh, job which are been assigned to so that means they are um they should be paying the tax and national insurance just like the way uh, the uh, other employees of the organizations are paying okay so with that in mind this uh, well uh, you know this ir35 was there before as well but the change what is going to be implemented in uh, well it's already implemented for public uh, sector companies in 2017 since april 2017 which is coming into place uh, for private sector in uh, 2020 that means in april in uh, in a month's time um so the client will be now responsible to decide whether um they should uh, consider um the freelancer what they used to be or the newly um new workforce what they are hiring whether they should consider them as an employee then they should be deducting the tax in a um uh, from their pay or not okay so that means uh, you know before that, um, so that means the obligation was on the PSCs or the, the companies or the cons consultants uh, who are working, um, you know, uh, through the company, uh, through their own uh, company, which they were the director of. Now this, uh, you know, this shift of, um, you know, the tax uh, sort of responsibilities and obligations now with the client. So the it is also called off payroll tax. So that means which is coming into place in 2020. Off payroll is same like you know in an um, IR 35. And um, why the companies were paying or why you know um, uh, the IR 35 uh, you know was highlighted before was a lot of empl em employees or a lot of consultants or contractors. Uh, you know they were they were paying uh, they were working just like employees um but because of this arrangement of working through through the their own pscs they were saving quite a, a bit of a tax that means 25 percent uh, kind of uh, you know up to 25 percent they were saving tax because they have to just uh, uh, draw uh, the dividend out of their own company and uh, bear minimum sort of a salary so now the companies uh, or the uh, HMRC says it can't be possible and there's also been beneficial for the clients as well because clients were saving a lot of uh, NI uh, national insurance contribution which is 13.8% as you know 
that's a quite substantial amount of money uh, they would have to pay to HMRC now uh, you know with uh, you know the hiring with them hiring the contractors for you know, they were saving that kind of a money and they don't have to get into the obligation of employment laws so they were not applicable because they are not employees or the con contractors were not employees of the organization so that means they don't have to pay pension as well on top of the employer NI and they don't have to be you know paying you know any sick pay holiday pay or they don't have to go for medical insurance stock option they were saving a lot of money okay not only the pension money but other stuff which they have to be obliged to pay as an employer the employment law was not applicable to them and that way a lot of other stuff as well they are avoiding all the legal hassles as well okay now with uh, uh, you know the IR 35 coming into play so why is the government bringing this because government realized that uh, you know they are sorry they are uh, you know um, now losing around 13 billion pounds that means they are expecting a 30 bi 13 billion pounds a year they can um, you know the exchequer can um, you know get from all these contractors or the consultants okay and then um, they say that okay it should be uh, equally you know the tax and NI contribution should be equal that means it doesn't matter if you are an employee of an organization or a contractors if you the working condition if you are working on the same number of hours same responsibilities uh, you know same hierarchical sort of way of working then you should be you know uh, paying um, the same similar kind of a taxes and NI just like you know the employees okay so that is what the interpretation of HMRC and that's where the new law, law coming into place. Okay. Now, who is, uh, sorry, when is it going applying? Uh, as you know, it is of uh, next month onwards from private for the private sector and uh, from um, for the public sector it's already been in force for since 2017. That means the public sector clients are already responsible for declaring the tax status of their uh, contractors um, you know, who they are hiring. Now, is it all the private sector employer, uh, private sector employers or private sector clients are in scope for uh, this IR35 changes or off payroll changes? Uh, not really. Uh, so this is applicable to medium and uh, big companies. So that means, uh, as you could see here, the annual turnover if the organization's annual turnover is 10.2 million pounds or more, or balance it, uh, you know, uh, total. Mm, that means all the assets, you know, uh, total of the assets is 5.1 million. Uh, pounds or more or if you have a more than 50 employees okay um, so if the two or more conditions are satisfied that means you are uh, going to be responsible for you know IR35 declaration that means you are responsible for declaring your tax, tax status or deducting your uh, sort of contractors um, you know tax and NI uh, from their um, you know uh, pay so how do you know that if you are already under IR35, uh, you know, if you are a contractor, well, that is, uh, you know, um, HMRC, you know, that's the last, um, uh, this is the URL, you can go and, uh, you know, check for yourself as well. But there are a lot of, lot of confusion around that link as well. Some people are saying that, uh, you know, there are, uh, it's, it's not uh, determining the status properly, but that is the, you know, government sort of a portal where you can go and find it out, okay. Now, quick test as well. Again, I am not a lawyer. I am nowhere relating to sort of, you know, uh, tax experts uh, as well. But this is just uh, my view I'm just sharing with you. So um, these are some certain tests you can also quickly check for yourself whether, you know, you are, um, you may be under IR35 or not. Is right of substitution. That means if, uh, you know, um, there is a, a clause in your contract and it is uh, really in practice that you know if you are not able to show up at your workplace there is somebody else uh, from your organization from your company who you know is engaged in that um, uh, contract uh, whether they are that person can go and attend okay if it's not the case then you know this right of substitution is not there that means you are under I-35 control and obligation that's a big thing that means uh, HMRC wants to see that you are not being controlled uh, by the client so that means you are not you know just like an employee are controlled by by the by their employer you are not uh, controlled if you are then you are within i35 that's some of the test as well um, you know are uh, you know is your in your contract it's uh, defining your own name personal name um, besides your company's name okay that you are the person who will be working there that means you are right away um, you know within IR35 
permission to take day off um, do you send an email you know saying that okay um, uh, manager i need uh, you know these days off can i take the days off and all those uh, permission if you are seeking then you are just like a deemed employee use of your own equipment does uh, your company provide uh, their um, it um, you know sort of infrastructure or their um, you know desktop or laptop to you to work if that is the case then you are within i35 reporting manager if you have fixed desk or reporting manager that means a uh, organized sort of hierarchical structure you are working in so that means you may be on within i35 and another thing is exposure to financial risk you know so that means um, if you are treating as an employee because employees do not have in this they have security of the income they show up they work then you know they are paid but a contractor uh, because they are building through the, their own company um, they should be taking the financial risk that means uh, that is um, you know your engagement there could be terminated um, tomorrow as well um, you know um, so that means that is are you taking taking that risk or do you have that risk in place if that is not that means you have been working there for long long time with the same client for for longer duration so that means probably you may run the risk of uh, being under ir35 okay but you can go and check this uh, you know website as well um, government's own portal to find out whether you are within ir35 okay the last person is the lead what do you need to do then way forward or what is what is the solution if you are under ir35 you would be paying a lot of around 25 percent of 25 percent more tax and an i contribution will be you'll be paying out so what is the way forward well what i you know if you are within ir35 uh, you know then better to go for an umbrella company so that means uh, let them uh, let the umbrella company take care of uh, you know uh, they will be paying your employer and i but you will be responsible for you know the tax uh, and employee and i and i see as well and uh, you know see if uh, they can provide you the pension as well so if that is the case then it's really good that at least you are uh, you know uh, planning for your future here for your for your old age uh, or you can go for a permanent employee become because there is not much of a difference now uh, that may be a bit but not much of a difference taking into account permanent employees other options like stocks and share options uh, you know uh, holiday pay and uh, sick pay and a lot of other stuff are there which is not uh, there for the contractors that means you may consider going permanent or at least during the transition phase next uh, next year probably you don't know what's happening so you, uh, better to you know my, and my suggestion go for permanent employee so that at least gives you a security of uh, your income and also your um, you know sort of other benefits as well you are getting um, or you can go for uh, this discuss with your client and uh, you know uh, change uh, your contract and your ways of working with the client so that means uh, let's say client is giving you a laptop so you make sure that you have your own laptop or changing your other stuff for you know uh, again I have 35 consultants are there you can check with one of uh, the, the tax advisors as well so that they can draft the contract and advise you how you can uh, work in a such a way that you know you are outside IR35 uh, so that you don't have to pay the tax NNI and uh, because you may be taking the risk financial risk as well um, you don't have the security of income just like a permanent employee has and uh, look for IR35 outside IR35 opportunities as well there are uh, it's not like all the companies are within IR35 because um, you know the smaller companies are outside so you can still there are opportunities outside IR35 as well um, all there are sort of ways of working in is laid down in such a way that you are completely IR35 as well so that you can go for those kind of an option as well if you choose to become or remain as a contractor engage in multiple assignment because i35 gives you an opportunity now so that means you can go for you know a few hours with one client few hours with other clients or few days with one client few days with other clients so that means you can diversify and you can you know which i think rather we all should because you know not to put all the eggs in one basket and you are outside i35 as well and uh, you know that is in a way you know uh, in, a, in a good as well that uh, you know multiple sources of income uh, and uh, what i would suggest is uh, you know start looking for opportunities uh, you could uh, see for opportunities where you can diversify uh, you can look for other opportunities as well to to make income uh, if you have already a pension pot or if you are getting into a permanent employment and uh, you know um, so pension scheme so i um, i uh, you know usually go for sas uh, you know small self administered uh, you know scheme uh, where you administer your own uh, pension pot and you can invest in uh, you know 
property and uh, especially it's uh, you know that allows for commercial property but which is very good as well you could do that so that you have a diversified portfolio and you have a, a multiple income stream you can also invest um, you know in uh, a, you know in properties as well so that will give you another income that means residential property uh, pay, through pension you can invest in commercial property as well and um, you can also get into um, or look around for other opportunities to diversify your income for example what could you do to in your spare time uh, you know evening time and weekend time um, to um, have another source of income to have another business for example you can um, get into a you know a multi-level marketing or network marketing business which is a very powerful which uh, you know i am also involved in uh, uh, one of the exciting network marketing business which i have been fairly successful as well or you can um, start your own uh, sort of a consulting practice as well uh, that means uh, core uh, consulting whatever is your knowledge you can uh, give that knowledge to others uh, consulting service services you can provide um, you know or if you have a passion you can put uh, your passion into a package that means you can sell it as a as a course online and you can uh, create a substantial income as well out of it so there are so many different ways uh, you know in your spare time as well you can diversify and make a substantial income so that's what it's all about. So I hope, uh, you know, I added some value or whatever was my thought. I just love to share it with you and uh, hopefully it made some sense. And uh, with that, we are over and out.